What tools, tactics, strategies are trending in digital right now for digital marketing, I'd, I'd, I'd guess? That is a good question, yeah. Um, what's interesting is, is like knowing the difference between what's a trend and what's a fad. Um, I think that there, there, are quite a, there are quite a few trends that are occurring that you know, could, could become trends and you know, could become fads. I think that there are, are some that we've, we've seen like TikTok is definitely not a fad. That is a trend and that is a, that is a platform that is very much in the arena right now. Um, and, and so I, I think being able to analyze, you know, what is, is trending and what is, what is a fad is, is something really, really important. Um, one, one particular tactic that is not necessarily a new trend, but I could definitely see that it is trending um, because it's, it, it's just so powerful is actually email marketing. Um, you know, I've, I've heard this a lot. Oh, email marketing is dead or, you know, there are, you know, I can't, I can't remember how many times I've heard Facebook ads are dead. And it just like, if you, if you focus on what's happening in, in just the space of general digital marketing, everything is dying. <laughs> but if you look at the data and look at what, what the success that we're getting, it's all, it's actually all alive and well. And so I, I'd say with email marketing, um, what, what is going to be the, the trend moving forward isn't the you know, monthly newsletter and only sending monthly email newsletters. The monthly email newsletter is a very important piece of content to send to your community to update on what's happening with, with the organization. But email marketing in terms of what I think is trending is actually on sequencing and automation and, and being extremely relevant and timely uh, with your messages on email because of the technology that we have. I mean, we use a software called active campaign and there's, there's quite a few different email marketing software. The reason why we like active campaign is, is what we're able to do with it for the cost that, that it costs, but I won't go into a sales pitch on, on active campaign for this. Um, what, what we can do with it is install a piece of code onto our website. Right, and we have really singular, you know, tracked information on all of our contacts. And what you can do is you can start setting up automations based off of what content people are consuming on your website. So if you see somebody that has been on a page, you know, let's say it's your services page and let's say it's our services page for Facebook ads and they've been on that three times in the last week, they're probably fairly interested in that if you were able to set up a sequence that when that happens, when somebody hits your, your, that page three times, then it sends out an email about, you know, Facebook advertising trends in 2020. I mean, that's a super relevant email to that person at that time. And so that's where I think there is going to be a big trend is in those, you know, real time and reactive conversations through, through the technology that we have at our fingertip. Eliana, what, what yeah. would you, oh. well, I, I was going to add one too. I mean, similar along the same vein of, as automation um, or with automation, as you said, is that um, good sequence, good sequencing and automation through LinkedIn um, is mm -hmm. obviously something that's gaining a lot of steam. Now we've all been subject to those annoying automated LinkedIn messages, right? Where so-and-so has got the best solution to triple your business overnight. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about relevant sequencing based on some good thoughtful logic. Um, you know, Actually, a good example is is pretty much everyone who is attending this webinar. If you've talked to me on LinkedIn, you were caught in an automation sequence um, from me, right? Um, but that being said, it's it, it's it's different in the sense that you know at some point the automation ends and and we carry on our conversation. So I think leverage. I think the trend that I want to talk about here is is leveraging automation to a point, but then merging that automation with real conversation right so it's kind of creating a a hybrid i think that's a big trend um, i know we have a big linkedin fan in the uh in the chat here so uh who, who, alan and alan i'm sure you'd agree with me um so yeah yeah and that, that's a really good point is that you know it, i i don't think you know i have to be careful because if you say automation you might think automating everything um but right. really automation the strength of it is is in the, the heavy lifting and those repetitive tasks right if you could send out you know 
a hundred LinkedIn connections a day. Don't necessarily recommend doing that because there's, there's you know, nuances within the platform that you need to be careful of. But say you were sending out a hundred, you know, if you send that manually, each one of those probably takes you, you know, a couple minutes to send. That's like now that's 200, 300 minutes of your day gone to that. Whereas, whereas you can set up an automation and have that be running all the time while you're doing your work. And then when those conversations come in, you pick them up uh, from a place of, of, of human interaction. So great, great point, Caleb. Yeah, I oh. think even for, even for social. Okay, go ahead. Go for it. No, no, go for it. Yeah, even, even for social, I would recommend using a blend of automation and human connection to actually build deep relationships. And like some, we have also some food uh, service clients and some people just, just want to know how many calories does uh, this dish have? And you don't need someone waiting three hours to get back to you. So even for social media, I think it has to be a healthy amount of automation and human connection and then also understanding when the conversation has to turn human uh, so i think we have to be very careful when we start leveraging bots and stuff like that on social even if you're not there it's really bad for your response rate if you uh, i don't know sunday 10 p.m you get a message and then the person has to wait i don't know 12 hours and they would rather just call the newspaper or like go viral on social media so i would like have an automated message like hey i'm not here i'll, I'll get back to you uh in three hours or something like that so even for social i think it's very healthy to have an automate automation part mm -hmm. um the, totally and and the part that i would add to it actually i think it will partially answer John's question about the role of social as well, but it's very much the same role as email, right? Like when we were looking at the customer value journey, um, you know, one of the, one of the phase was subscribe, right? It's about, you know, um, having a way for us to go back and, and send our message to our prospect, right? Um, Cause at the end of the day, um, your, your, your uh, revenue is driven by one key component, which is the frequency of purchase and staying top of mind is very important. When you think about what are the different mechanism to stay top of mind, which does not uh, require you pay additional media expense or advertising expense or whatnot, there's really just two ways. Either that person follow you on social media or they're on your email list, right? Mm -hmm. if, if one of the two, then you are able to go back and get your information, whether it's a new service or it's a seasonal product or whatever it is in front of them without having to pay Facebook again or Google again or whatnot, right? So, so that's a really uh, a key role with that. But the main difference being that email has a benefit because it's so ingrained in everyone's day-to-day -day routine that, you know, everyone is used to checking emails. You know, I don't know about, you know, um, the, the, the 12 years old now, but generally speaking for, for adults, and I would assume everyone on this call, email is just part of the routine. Um, so, and, and your, your, um, um, your analytics capability, like Connor was saying with email is just substantial, right? Being able to go and automate um, emails to be sent, given the behavior of whether you um, open or clicked or they visit this website or whatnot, right? Um, whereas on social, it has a different benefits, which is it has the ability for um, the community themselves to kind of build on the conversations and build a community across that platform. So there's, you know, hopefully that kind of um, partially answer the Zanj question, but at the same time, uh, yeah. add on to the email. Uh, one, one thing to jump in on there and add is that, you know, <laughs> to Connor's point about email advertising is dead, or Facebook is dead and all these things. Um, you know, if you're this person down here, the one who wants to pick out names for the children and you're leveraging that strategy in email and Facebook, a hundred percent it's dead. Email is dead. You know, if you want to make people aware through a, through a cold email and the first thing you're going to do is talk about how you can triple their business overnight, email is dead. So I think really the trend that I like to, to hang, to, to think about a lot is that I think a trend is just creating a customer value journey and, and <laughs> leveraging your digital tactics on, on top of, on top of this, right?